What I want to get done now is this slideshow banner that we see over here. This is actually three different images, and with a little help of a jQuery uh, slideshow plugin, we get um, this cool slideshow action. So I like it. I definitely like it. Um, so we need to find a jQuery slideshow plugin. Now, um, well, there we go. Let's just say slideshow jQuery would be what we could look. We don't even need the plugin. And already you see that um, I got a bunch of options over here. Uh, actually, one of historically cycle was a very cool plugin that uh, I used often, but I'm not sure. At least when I checked it a while ago, development on this thing sort of slowed down and it wasn't responsive and it wasn't touch enabled. So beyond just looking for something to do slideshow action for me, I wanted to, you know, I'm making, well, everything I do from here on in is responsive and I need to focus on the mobile and tablet experience, which namely for this implementation is touch. I want when someone, um, when you, you know, this particular implementation not only works by clicking the the buttons like so, but if you're on a um, touch device, if you swipe left and right with your finger, it's going to um, uh, move. So there are definitely more than one option for that, and some are most of them are free, some of them are paid, but the one that I liked the best that uh, gave me the responsiveness, the touch enabled, and... Um, and the options that I wanted was this BX slider. And it happens to be a relatively popular one as well, which uh, popularity does matter in the sense that you know that it's being actively developed on and tested and, and that business. So here is the jQuery slider. Now, um, when we unzip the folder, we see a number of assets in there, uh, but you know, sort of the standard procedure for implementing a jQuery plugin is there's definitely a JS file, a JavaScript file that you're going to um, attach to your document. And more than likely, there's a CSS file that should have some neutral enough CSS that it just gives you very base styles and doesn't actually override anything that you're doing on your page anyway. So um, let's just go right to the directions on how to use this. So uh, how to install. So link required files being step one. And we see that the three files they're linking over here is one is jQuery because jQuery is the dependency. Um, the second one is the JavaScript and the third is the CSS file I just mentioned. So okay, let me go into my document. We have the uh, CSS folder here. So when I bring this in, I'm going to pop in the CSS fold, the CSS file there. Perfect. And here's the JS file. I'm going to do the same with the JavaScript. So, um, all right, cool. Now what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to link these in my HTML, right? So let me start with the. Uh, yeah, let me go back with the CSS since that's at the top of the document. Here we go. Um, well, wait a second before I do that. I want to. I'm just actually copying things into my um, clipboard over here, but it's, can't really see that. So let's do this. Let's uh, go to our HTML document. I closed these out before, so let me load these all back in. I know I'm going to be working with the CSS and the um, JS files. So, okay, so here I am. I'm, I need to first link this CSS file to my document. Now, remember, uh, this C the CSS for this plugin needs to be wedged in between uh, our custom CSS and our CSS reset slash normalizer. So um, as long as I put it after normalize and before main, I'm good, right? It, it shouldn't interfere at all with slide bars. So um, whether I put it above or below, it doesn't matter. It just needs to be sandwiched in the middle somewhere between those other two important ones. And what was that file called? 
Here we go, jQuery BX slider. Now, I know I've mentioned this before. You see, I just copy and paste the naming convention of these things. That's like the number one place people make just stupid errors, you know? And it could be frustrating because you don't know. You follow the directions. You think you did everything right, but just it just doesn't work. And that's just because, you know, you, you like flipped around two letters or something. Um, okay. When I add the JS file, the actual plugin functionality, uh, sort of the same thing. I need to make sure, at the very least, that um, this f this JS is before my main.js, right? Because my main.js is my uh, custom JavaScript file, but I need to make sure it's after my jQuery because it depends on jQuery for its functionality. So I'm going to pop that guy right in there, um, copy and paste that, and here you go. All right, um, step one, done. Uh, create HTML markup. Here's where we have to actually change around the HTML that we have in our file ever so slightly. So in our current implementation, uh, actually here I just commented out two of the images over here just to make life easier for me. Um, what I actually ended up doing is uh, just having these as images and this thing's telling me that I need to put them in as an unordered list with the class BX slider. No problem. No problem there. So here we go. After section, BX slider, I have the UL there. And then I'll terminate it. I'll push these all over. And now I'll just add that list item to each one of them. OK. And um, not quite done. I think I still have to. Oh, yeah, right. I got to call the BX slider because every time you have it, you need to actually initiate it in your own custom uh, JavaScript folder. So or JavaScript file. Uh, here we go. So the declaration is pretty easy. It's targeting the BX slider class and it's calling the function BX slider. And if every th if the directions are right, because I think we followed them to a T, um, this thing should just work. Uh, here we go. Oh, look at this. We have, ah, very nice. So this is actually working because we do have the three files listed. There is something missing, if you'll notice. I have these left and right uh, buttons over here. I didn't put these on my own. This is actually part of the plugin. Um, if we go back to the folder where I took it from, you'll know you'll uh, oops this is our own folder you'll see that we have uh, the BX slider we took it from this main folder over here now I see a folder called images and when I look at it this kind of looks like these buttons because it is these buttons and now the CSS file was in this folder so that means that relative to that file um, I'm sorry, the images folder was in the same folder as the CSS file. So if I'm going to pop it into my own uh, directory structure over here, I, I need to keep that relative path. So simply put, I'm just going to go into the CSS folder. I'm going to pop this bad boy in here. And let me give this a refresh. Aha! Look at that. Cool. So this is working nicely now. Um, now, there are a couple nuances that I want to take care of because a after I put this in here, look at this. I got this thing. I don't even know what that is. It looks like a little border border shadow or something. And I think, uh, well, I don't like it. So here's what I'm going to do to sort of customize it now. Uh, these styles are more than likely coming in uh, from the CSS file that we brought in for, for BX slider. Uh, so easy enough, I could figure out what that is by just right-clicking and inspect item and use Chrome DevTools. Because so here's the item I want to inspect. Now, um, this is the individual image. I probably want to go a little bit higher until I. Okay, this looks about right. You see, I'm just highlighting on this div because now this thing is 
is in the uh, if you look at the viewport it's sort of saying that it's uh uh, th that blueness over there is telling me that it has something to do with it. So let me look at what's going on over here. Look at this. I already see after clicking that, here is something that looks like it could be doing it. It's gray. Box shadow is the name of the uh, option that, that does something like that. So if I uncheck this, eh, I don't get rid of it fully. Box shadow. Maybe it's even coming in from somewhere else. What if I go box shadow and I try to edit it by going none? Ha! I got rid of it. Okay. So what's this saying? So if I, you see how this guy is the class that I have over there? If I give that thing a box shadow, a, yeah, box shadow of none, I should get rid of it in my, uh, in my, uh, implementation sort of two ways of doing this the way that I do is I would just actually copy this and bring it in um, let's see bring it in to my main.css let me go down to my author custom styles uh, I'm gonna make a note that this is the BX slider tweaks over here um, so I sort of could refer back to it I could go do this thing and do, um, what was it, box shadow, none, and now let me give this guy a refresh, oops, hmm, let me close this and give it a refresh, maybe it's, there could be more stuff at play, but let's see, oh, no, no, there we go, so that's gone, okay, so that did do it, I just had a little caching issue over there, um, actually, uh, that's it, oh, I was going to tell you, yeah, before I forgot, I said, um, the other way I would have done it is, um, let me bring this guy back in. Uh, the other way you could have done it is if you find the element that it is, here's a cool little, um, this is more just a uh, trick with uh, dev tools. You know, I was here and we saw the box shadow. I could have right clicked on this guy and says copy CSS path. And when I bring that in, that would have also given me, well, at least the viewport one. This has given us both of them, but but here you go. So I could have done that as well, um, just showing you options on how you figure out the selectors for these things. Uh, there is one other tweak I'd like to do at this point here, and that's uh, get rid of these little buttons over here. So same deal, inspect and what is this so this is just the one item so as I sort of go up the nodes over here I see I have the BX pager um, what I could do just to make sure this is it I go display none got rid of it cool so let me, let me use that trick I'll just copy CSS path bring it in over here I don't need all of that stuff let's just go this uh, BX default there we go, and I'll do a display none over there, save it. Now if I get rid of it, nice, and there you have it. I mean, that was mighty easy to um, get accomplished. You know what, and just to verify that they are actually different images and we're not going around in an endless loop and we, we're all proud of ourselves, um, placehold it and sort of the final thing allows you to define a color for these things and it says so color and text it says the first color is always the background color and the second color is the text color um, I don't even really care let's let's just so that I think this is just telling me that if I add a forward slash after the um, after our sizing it'll make it a different color so what if we so here's what I'm trying to do um, and these things, I'll go forward slash FFF, forward slash EEE. -E. Now let's just give it a go. I didn't even know if that works fully, but. Oh, well, that's white. That's gray, and that's a darker gray. All right, those are three different grays. Cool. So there we go. Now I verify that I'm actually staring at <laughs> something different.